Today we are talking about Cthulhu. Now this is going to be a Cthulhu guide. We go through all of his abilities, little tips and tricks surrounding the character, builds and everything else you need to know. There's a lot of information for this character in particular, so let's get started. The first thing that we have is his basic attack chain. That is already very weird, because he has three different attacks. The first basic attack is a 16 range unit basic attack, which is this one. The second basic attack is a 20 unit range attack. So the second attack will have more range as you can see here. If you look at the target, it still shows up and it'll still hit the target. The third attack also has a 20 unit range, but it's AOE. So if you get close enough to multiple targets, you can hit multiple targets with this attack. This is quite useful and furthermore, the third attack, as you can see from the smoldering effect here, will apply the passive as well. Cthulhu's passive is Prey on Fear. And this passive works with Torment and Insanity. Torment is what you can apply with either your third basic attack, which is this one, or with various abilities. For example, if I use the one, you'll see the smoldering effect as well. And if you reach four stacks of Torment, then the enemy will go into Insanity. What's worth keeping in mind with this Torment mechanic is that one stack on the target will last for five seconds. However, if you apply another stack in these five seconds, then the stacks will all refresh. So as long as you apply another effect within five seconds, you're good and you can get to the insanity point. Insanity looks like this. It's when the enemy has this red effect around him. And this lasts for 20 seconds. You can see it in the passive down here. And it increases Cthulhu's power by 25 per target and also affects damage reduction, but we'll get to that later on. I just want to show you, if I activate the ability on 5 target, this is what it looks like. I get these 5 eyes and I get 125 extra power. But that is very hard to do. His first ability is Sanity Break. This is a cone attack with medium damage. It applies a 10 to 30% attack speed slow for 3 seconds, depending on the rank of the ability. It also makes the enemy deal 20% or more reduced damage to Cthulhu for 6 seconds. We'll get to the or more part in just a second. This ability applies 1 to 2 stacks of Torment, depending on where you're hitting the enemy from. If they are facing you, it applies 2 stacks of Torment, and if they're looking away from you, then it applies 1 stack of Torment. At full insanity, as we can see here, the ability gets additional effects. The main effect here is a 1.5 seconds fear. What you can also see is that when this fear is applied, the insanity is removed from the target, so you lose the bonus power that you would previously have. However, in return, you get permanent extra damage mitigation, which you can see here, and that's 0.5 each time you're able to proc this fear. This damage mitigation is the one that I already mentioned beforehand that is applied for 6 seconds, and this is further up more applied during his ultimate as well. Leveling Sanity Break increases the damage by 45 per rank and also gives you a higher attack speed slow, but the base damage of the ability on rank 1 is also relatively high. The cooldown of this ability is just 10 seconds, so you can use it quite frequently, making it his primary bully tool for consistent pressure. His second ability is the Mire. I'm going to show that once first so you get an idea what it looks like. It's a channeled AoE with an expanding radius from 20 to 30 units. What you can see here are three different circles. The first one is the initial slow, that's just 10% that applies right away. So the foot of Cthulhu is on it right now. The second one is the radius that it will be when it first deals damage and slows more. And then the second one, or the third one here rather, is when the root is applied. So this is a 10% slow here. Now it's a 35% slow and now it is a root. So it's a double CC in this ability. Both instances do medium damage, but to be honest, if you combine both of them, it's very high damage for a Guardian. And the Myra lingers for three seconds afterwards, supposedly, even though I think it's a little bit shorter, actually. Leveling this ability increases the damage by 45 per tick of it, or 90 in total, so quite a lot, and reduces the cooldown by one second. The cooldown is between 18 to 14 seconds, depending on the rank. This ability is his primary clearing tool in most situations, and also often his primary CC, at least outside of the ultimate. 
This ability can be cancelled, so I can, for example, just drop one of them and then cancel the ability, but enemies can also interrupt the ability the same way by CCing you. This can be used effectively if you time it right, in order to get a little bit more time to swing your basic attack if you don't wait out the full animation after the second damaging tick as well. Overall, this ability is relatively easy to avoid. As you can see, it takes quite a while to wind up and the slow takes a while to come out, so in a game scenario you will see many situations where you can't actually apply the full route to enemies if they're paying attention. His third ability is Rushing Terror. This is a high mobility disrupt with two side projectiles. It's a dash and then you see this projectiles going along on the side. Now what this ability does is it pushes the enemies away and stuns them for a brief duration at the same time, so it's a stun and a knockback, and it's supposed to push them into these sidelines where the projectiles are, and normally that works against a stationary target and you get two instances of damage. Against a moving target it doesn't always work if you hit them with a the center, so you might want to angle it a little bit, uh, it just depends on the exact situation. But there are situations where you will not get all instances of damage if you hit them head on as I did here. This dash takes priority over most other dashes with CC in the game, so it's a very strong dash overall, and that is probably why it has a little bit of a wind-up as well. And the range is actually surprisingly long, if you look at the range indicator, it just feels shorter because Cthulhu is so large. It has a relatively long cooldown of 16 seconds to offset that a little bit. Leveling this ability only increases the damage by 70 per rank, but it's still a very high damage increase at the same time. This ability can either be used as your primary escape tool or as your primary damaging tool if you choose to max this first, we get to that in a bit. It is possible to cancel this ability and you can see that here. So you can shorten the range a little bit. It's very annoying to do though because often it will not recognize the cancel immediately so you have to click the cancel button quite a few times for it to actually go through. And the projectiles will still travel the full way so that's pretty cool. But yeah, it's worth keeping in mind that you can slightly change the distance here if you want to end up closer to a target instead of going through them too far, but you have to have the right timing or to spam your cancel button. His ultimate is a transform and that is a descent into madness. First thing you see is that this has a relatively large radius. It is roughly around 45-ish units, a little bit more than 40. I don't have the exact number for this unfortunately and it deals damage to everyone around you. During the transformation itself you also have 80% damage mitigation. So this is quite a good start. When in the ultimate your health is increased by 30%, that means your max health is increased by 30% and your current health is increased by 30%, meaning the lower your HP, the less you benefit from this essentially in terms of actual value. The damage mitigation that you get from Sanity Break is also applied during his ultimate. That means if you stack a lot of damage mitigation through your sanity break by fearing enemies when they're at full stacks, then you'll get more damage mitigation in the ultimate as well. The black ground effect that you can, or gray ground effect that you can see during the ultimate is a lingering torment effect. So while enemies are in this area, they constantly stack torment on them, meaning they can actually go into insanity from this as well. This has roughly a 50 unit radius and you can see that if enemies are close to you it's quite effective, especially since it stacks so quickly when they are facing you. The ultimate duration is between 12 to 16 seconds depending on the rank. The first ability in the ultimate, because all of his abilities change, is Sever. This replaces his basic attack, it is basically a rectangle AoE damage and it goes from the right to the left with a 60 unit range and this 60 unit is the end point of the ability. That is worth keeping in mind when we're looking at the next ability because you can't actually adjust the range of this ability by aiming forward or backward like this as it will just stay in place in relation to Cthulhu himself. This ability applies relatively high damage and it also applies a 3% protection reduction to the target for each time they're hit up to 5 stacks or 15% reduction. Stability has a relatively long animation and a 1 second cooldown, but as you can see here, even if I have maxed out cooldown reduction, then, or like, even higher than maxed out cooldown reduction, it will still take quite a while to get the whole attack off, so you can't just constantly spam it. And here you can also see this max range. 
His second ability is Devastate. This is a 70 unit range, but in this case you can actually aim it, and the 70 unit is just the center point of it. It deals AoE damage, medium level damage I would say, and it knocks up enemies if they're not knock up immune, such as this guy. It's a very short knock up, but it's still CC. This ability is the one that you want to use if you want to catch enemies at the edge of your range, and it can also combo very well into the one, so you can use them very well together, set up the target with the two in order to secure the one on them, especially if they have their little bit distance that you want to bridge beforehand. It comes with a 5 second cooldown, so you can use this multiple times during the ultimate as well. I'm going to show you how quickly you can go into the one afterwards, so this is almost securing the one because the enemy has very little time, little options to get away during this combo. The third ability in the ultimate is Transfuse. This ability is in a circle radius of 60 units around him and it'll have a relatively long wind up. It hits all enemies in the area and it also hits all allies in the area. To enemies it simply deals damage, to allies it does a lot more effects. Depending on the level, this ability heals the allies on your team for 10 to 14% of their own maximum health and it also increases their power by 20 and increases their movement speed by 20% for 3 seconds. The ability has a 6 seconds cooldown, so with a little bit of cooldown reduction you can use this quite frequently in the ultimate and you'll have very little downtime on this ability given that your allies stick to you so that you can make use of it. When it comes to the leveling order, many things are possible with Cthulhu. One thing will remain a constant, and that is maxing the ultimate whenever you can. It's just the strongest ability to max, because all of the abilities in the ultimate will level up when you level up the ult. Outside of that, however, you have many options. On level 1, I can't really tell you which ability you should go for best, because every single ability has its own perk here. If you want the highest damage possible on level 1, then Rushing Terror is your go-to, and it also comes with mobility, so that's nice. If you want to have bully potential on level 1, then Sanitary Break might be better, because it is easier to apply it on multiple targets without having to be positioned the same way as with Rushing Terror, and at the same time, it also has a shorter cooldown. The Mire is your safest option for clearing, so really all three are possible. And that goes up to level 3, basically. So you could, for example, go 3 into 1, which has relatively high basic damage at the start, into 2. But at that point, for a beginner Cthulhu player, I would recommend shifting the attention to the 2, even though that's the one you max last, or level last, because it is the safest ability and the damage ramps up a lot, even though the first rank is relatively weak, which is why we wait out with leveling it. Then we max the ultimate and then we put our points into the two as long as we can. After this we are flexible again. I would say the safer bet here is once again Sanity Break so you can keep rushing Terra as your escape tool until you're more used to playing Cthulhu. Then we're just maxing out the Mire, then we're going through Sanity Break whenever we can we put a point at the ult and then we go for rushing Terra until we're at level 20. But keep in mind for Cthulhu many leveling orders are possible. This is just one that is an example if you're still getting used to Cthulhu. You can definitely max out the 3 due to its high damage, that means you have to play more aggressive though because you don't have an escape the same way, and you can definitely level the 1 if you want to trade a little bit more that way and you think you're safe enough to not have to rely on the Mire for distant clear or if you feel like you want to get disrupted too often if you're against a soul laner that can easily interrupt the Mire. Now let's talk a little bit about Cthulhu's combos. The first most obvious one is using the 2 first, then using the 3, and if you get the full effect of Insanity applied, use the 1 afterwards, and now you have successfully gotten one stack of mitigation relatively quickly. That only works if the enemy is not moving away at all though, and if you are lucky enough to get all of the stacks of Insanity on your 3, otherwise you may have to throw in an additional basic attack. An easier way to get the stacks during laning that I found more effective most of the time is to simply use your 3 onto the target, maybe basic attacks depending on if you get 1 or 2 stacks, which you won't always know, and then just use the 1, because what that does as long as they're facing you is it gives you the full stacks of insanity and these stay on the enemy for 20 seconds. 
depending on the situation, the enemy won't be able to stay at a distance to you for 20 seconds just to avoid the stack. So whenever the ability is off cooldown, you go back to them and you get your additional stack so that you can get the mitigation as well. So those are the combos to get the stacks, but outside of that, there's obviously more. A very quick damage combo that you can do is simply use your 3 into your 1 because the delay between that is relatively short and the enemy is CC'd for quite a while, so that's some quick damage that you can apply to enemies. If you want to go a little bit more bursty than that, then you can go from the 3 into the 1 and after that you go into the ult. You can also weave in a basic attack as I did there, you can see that is possible sometimes. And between all that you get a lot of burst damage because the ult itself also does a lot of burst. However, if you are in a team fight, what you want to do instead is use the 3 and then go straight into the ultimate so that you can reliably confirm that on as many enemies as possible who might otherwise go away if you try to use the 1 in between and give them that little bit more of a time frame to escape. After using your ult, it may feel intuitive to start swimming the basic attack effect first to apply protection reduction, the first ability, Sever, but honestly, in most situations, I found better to actually use the 3 at the start. That way, you buff up all your allies right away so that they can start attacking. You lose a little bit of HP for that, but they get that power and that movement speed and maybe a little bit of heal if they need it as well, so that they can engage much better. Also, if you don't need the ult, just cancel it. That allows you to combo much longer as well, because your abilities will still go off cooldown during this time. So if you're looking to secure a kill on a target and they're about to get away, it can be useful to actually just cancel out of the ult. So for example, if I went in here and I did a very standard combo here, I just did my, my 2 into my 3 into my 1 and then I ulted, and now I use my abilities for a little bit and say now we're reaching the point uh, where for some reason the Odin was almost dead and he survived everything before that, then I just go out of my ult and I have all my abilities up again and I can just continue damaging him. Some general tips and tricks that I have for Cthulhu. He generally plays best in mid game. He has a little bit of ramp up time, the early game is not the strongest and in very late game he's just much easier to take down for many enemies because his base damage falls off a fair bit, his scaling isn't the highest and enemies finish their builds and have more effective tools against him. You also definitely want to look after your team, especially when you are planning to ult. Ulting with your team around is just so much more effective because you have a buff for them, a heal, and you have others around that have a better time securing kills than you do. Avoid extended 1v1 trades. He's not exactly designed for those because he's more of a team character, and it can force you to waste your ult somewhat sometimes just to survive or potentially get a kill where you might need it more in a teamfight afterwards. Cthulhu is definitely a strong character and he has many strengths at the moment. He has a very high AoE damage, especially in teamfights, so that even when you play him in support you will see surprisingly high damage numbers at the end of the game. He has a very good team utility, I just talked about how he can apply that a little bit. He also has good disruption and zoning CC. Due to his massive size, he comes with an extremely good body block, especially in the ultimate. But he does not come without weaknesses. First of all, he is relatively team dependent, as he himself does not have the best kill secure. He's more there for consistent AoE damage. He doesn't have great overall CC duration for a Guardian. Yes, if you can confirm the full 2, then it's relatively good, but often that's just not going to happen. And most of his other CC is relatively short or relatively hard to apply. He is a big target with limited mobility during the ult, and that is worth keeping in mind. You should generally be very careful with ADCs and basic attacking melee characters who have access to concise because even in your ultimate, those can often shred you quite easily. Now let's talk about builds. The roles I'm going to look at here are support and solo, even though the same things would basically still apply if he was for example played in jungle or mid with different starter items essentially, and then transitioning into similar builds. He benefits from a bruiser playstyle very much, with a little bit of health and defense and a little bit of power or other damaging effects along with that. As a support, I would start him with Guardian's Blessing. 
I would usually build into cooldown boots or into travel shoes, both have their purpose here. Then I would go into Stone of Binding to get more early aggression going, and then build the classic Gauntlet of Thieves. You can also swap those around if you want to be a little bit safer. After this, his items will resemble those of Soul Laners a lot more than you typically see on support, again because he just benefits from having a fair bit of damage to remain a threat throughout the game. He is a very damage heavy aggressive support in that regard. The only item that you probably won't see as often on solo that I would still recommend more in support is Relic Dagger. Obviously there are situations where you also want a Sovereignty or a Hardwood or something like that, but they are relatively rare comparatively speaking. So let's look at the solo builds to know what else you might want to build afterwards. For now you want to start him with Warrior's Blessing. If a new meta start for solo laners gets established for magical solos and Warrior's Blessing is not valued enough anymore then you would want to switch as well but for now we're gonna say Warrior's Blessing. With the boots, you likely want CDR boots here as well. Travelers can also be done once again, especially if you wanna play a super safe lane and maybe avoid getting teleport. Your next slot is typically your defensive item, so if you're against the magical, it's probably going to be Void Stone, and against the physical, you have your choice of Celestial Legion Helm or Jade Emperor's Crown or Breastplate of Valor if you're looking to ult more frequently. Then afterwards, I would still recommend getting Stone of Binding. I think the item is excellent on him because almost all of his abilities apply it in one way or another. And this is the point where the solo and support builds kind of start overlapping. So these items are going for both. The next item that I would definitely look towards is Ethereal Staff. More health benefits him due to his ult anyways. So that just synergizes very well with his kit. And the extra damage is of course very nice as well. After that, there are many, many options. You could look for defensive items, or aura items, damage items, cooldown reduction items, everything goes. An item that is very nice on him is Mantle of Discord, so if you ever get low surrounding the ult, you have a way to keep enemies off a little bit easier. Gem of Isolation synergizes very well with a lot of his abilities and helps him to stick to enemies even better. Soul Reaver is an item that will allow him to deal a lot of damage very, very quickly, especially during the ultimate. Spear of Desolation is a great addition to any Guardian at the moment anyways. I will talk about that in a future video, but as a damaging choice here, it's absolutely excellent. And likewise, if needed, Divine Ruin. Stone of Gaia is an option you can look towards because it helps him with his sustain, because it stacks with this ultimate effect. So if you have more max health, you also heal more. And Soul Gem is an item you can look towards if you already built some power items and you want to heal allies more and deal some more damage because he has a very easy way to stack this multiple times between all of his abilities to get quite a few applications throughout a team fight. But those are not just the primary options, there are options beyond that, depending on what exactly you want to go for. If you want to have some more team utility, you have to counter some specific damage or anything like that, you know how it goes with tanks. And that is it for the Cthulhu guide, I hope that gives you a good overview of how to play the character. Make sure to get a macro for group up so that as soon as you use your ultimate, allies will actually be with you. I hope you enjoyed this and if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the sub button and maybe the bell so you will be notified of future Smite videos as well, where we can talk about Spear of Desolation a little bit more. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, I hope to see you for the next one soon. Deuce Loth, out.